For years, the press ignored players' bad behaviour off the pitch. Not anymore. They have fame, they have fortune, and they must come to understand that that brings with them a sense of responsibility as role models to the community at large and a sense of duty to the image of the game. You've had a good win, you've had a game, so you, you go out and, uh, with your mates, even with your wives. You know, you can go out with your wives and still be in the papers the next day out boozing and Ruddock was drunk. That's not news. But it used to be a different story. In our day, we got away with murder. And I mean murder. We got away with murder because, you know, it, it, there was no... When we went on European trips, there was just sports writers with us. Today, they sneak in a newsman. As the tabloids have got nastier, footballers used to a pint or eight have found their alcohol intake is front page news. Our next bad boy was the press's first major target. Not for the brutal tackling that had him labelled the Shankill skinhead, but for his boozing habits off the pitch. Norman Whiteside. envy the players today um, you know with the media attention they get um, years ago um, at Old Trafford Rob Brown Robson Paul McGrath and myself got a lot of attention I think we were man marked by a couple of newspapers at one time we got away with that it was very much a bevy culture and they used to get together and they'd have what Robson would call team meetings and they would tell their wives don't expect to see me for a couple of days and they would just drink and drink and drink we certainly went out on a Saturday night and a Sunday lunch and maybe a Wednesday after a game, but um, never sort of the Thursday and Fridays before a game. So in that, in that sense, I thought we were quite right. They used to drink for Britain. You'd never get away with that now. Never get away with it now. Right side, off that bench. The precocious white side burst into Manchester United's first team in 1982, aged 16. This is Buren, beautifully delivered header for white side. Huge colossus, the Shankill Skinner, they used to call him. A terrifying presence. Fully grown man at the age of 16. He's a player that certainly the Liverpool fans love to hate. They think he's a little too rugged for their taste. His Ulster upbringing had prepared him for anything that could happen on a football pitch. I grew up in um, the back streets of Belfast, the Shankill Road area. You had to stand on your own two feet. You know, if people bumped into you or give you a smack around the head, you, you had to hold your own. I must give my mum and dad credit as well. I mean, I've got two other brothers and none of us got involved in any paramilitaries or anything like that. We all actually turned to football. In 1982, aged 17, he broke Pele's record for the youngest player to appear in the World Cup finals. Whiteside pushed it too far, and Stoichovic then fouled by Whiteside. The young man from Manchester United is going to mark his first international appearance with a yellow card. You know, a lot of my friends went to jail and I actually um, ended up going to coach them. I went into the prison service back home in Northern Ireland and coached my friends. One of them turned to me and said, Norman, you went to the World Cup in 82. I came here to jail. And he'd been in there ever since. So, you know, I could easily have been Norman Whiteside if I hadn't had the talent to play football. Nine years on, still only 26, Whiteside lost a long battle against injury and had to quit. The thing that I wonder lurks at the back of Norman Whiteside's mind is whether the drink slowed him down that fraction so that he was caught by tackles and was getting injured as a result. He now works as a podiatrist, specialising in looking after young footballers' feet and legs. In equal parts Roy of the Rovers and Roy of the Rovers' return, Norman Whiteside joins Sooners and Keane in midfield. When the stakes are high and losing is not an option, professional footballers in all eras have done what's necessary. It's gone on for, since year dot it, it will carry on. If it's nil-nil last minute and he's a throw and goal, you're going to bring him down and face the consequences. In the 1980 FA Cup final, Arsenal bruiser Willie Young did what any self-respecting Scots enforcer would do. But one gruesome televised incident from two years later stands head and shoulders above all others, and it was committed by a goalie. There have been great British goalies. What a fantastic save by Gordon Frank! There have been wild British goalies. This cuts very badly indeed by Spring! And Spring is held goal! But no one's seriously ruthless enough for the bad boys' eleven. 
Our keeper was a brilliant player, but is most remembered for one heart-stopping rush of blood, a sickening clash that brought him death threats from irate fans. It's such a shocking moment, it makes him our team's only overseas signing. German international Harold Schumacher. I could never cope well with defeat. There are all these wonderful sayings that in defeat you can see true heroes, but I was never one of them. I could never lose well. In the unforgettable World Cup semi-final of 1982, West Germany and France were matching each other blow for blow. Blackney versus Schumacher. Still no sign of either side wilting or checking out of the fight. With the scores level, the French launched another attack, putting midfielder Patrick Battiston through on Schumacher's goal. Taking over and playing the great ball for Battiston. And Battiston, so unlucky. It was an appalling challenge. Um, and I think, it, it, you know, it took a few years for Schumacher to become respectable again and, and overcome it. Ball's kicked away, and out of that picture, Schumacher just kept running straight into Battiston. The ball was about 16 metres from the goal, and so I thought, I bet Patrick Battiston is going to kick the ball over my head and into the goal. So I sprinted towards him, pushing myself off the ground, fully expecting I was going to catch the ball in the air. That was an automatic red card now. I mean, no buts about it at all, was there? And he got nothing. He didn't hit the ball right, but I'd already pushed myself off the ground with my knees to my chest like this towards him. So I thought, well, I better turn away or else something terrible is going to happen. But I turned away but still hit him here with my hip. And it looks like a stretcher job. Maybe quite seriously hurt. I think the referee may have been so shocked that he went into an immediate sort of denial. That hasn't happened on a pitch where I'm taking any part in it. Because as famously, we all say he didn't even give the penalty. Never mind send the fella off. They got a goal kick. The game went to a penalty shootout. Battiston was in hospital with a broken jaw and three cracked vertebrae. While Schumacher had the chance to make the vital save which would put West Germany into the World Cup final. Bossy. And if the ball came to me like that again today, then I would have to leap towards the ball in the same way again. It was an accident, and although I'm sorry it happened, I went out there with a good conscience. Um, what, an accident? Yeah. Maintaining his innocence to this day, Harold Schumacher is our bad boy goalkeeper. For modern players, constant TV scrutiny makes it virtually impossible to bear grudges on the pitch. Multiple cameras and microphones pick up every dirty word and deed. It all goes back to the referees. In, in the past, you probably get a ticking off for blatantly booting somebody, whereas now you, you'd be straight off, so I don't think you can take grudges onto a park. But in the late 70s, the law of the jungle still prevailed. The next man in our lineup had a catchphrase reserved for trembling young opponents. Do that again, and I'll snap your back. Nothing in his petrifying appearance suggested that he wasn't capable of acting on his threats. Yet when he hung up his boots in 1979, more well-disposed referees had given Liverpool's Tommy Smith just the two red cards. Smith up with Mariner, and a foul by Mariner on Smith. Smith stretched out on his face, in a fairly firm collision of its knocked uh, Tommy Smith out. Patience. It might not happen this game. Uh, it might be 12 months later. But I, can, I will always remind the person if, if, if I give them a little whack. That's for 12 months ago, son, you know. And Smith again, and he caught Mariner across the shin. That's the fourth time that Tommy Smith has caught Mariner since Smith was knocked unconscious. I come from Liverpool. I was born by the ground, funnily enough. I was brought up down a little bit of rough area. A working class hero is something to be. I was happily brought up at Liverpool at, at the early age to bully people and 
not necessarily for your own good, but for the club's good.